everyone's on a massive learning curve of trying to deal with the new power units and you know, the proper energy deployment strategies. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we've been slowly, methodically working through um, in, improving the car in all areas, really. So Hareth was uh, you know, a steady start and careful introduction of checking all the systems. And then we've been working up through the two Bahrain tests to what's going to be closer to our um, potential our race um, potential. Um, I think over those three tests, you know, we've learned you know, a huge amount. Um, you know, just trying to deal with uh, the, the complexity of the power unit, um, even in terms of engineering of the car and all the interactions of all the different control systems, is a huge task. And you know, the track is really the only place where you you really actually learn how to deal with all of those. Yeah, as we head to Melbourne for the start of the year, I mean obviously the, you know, the, the concept of a race will change dramatically. The reliability, I think you know, to start with that's going to be challenged just for the sheer complexity of cars. Obviously there's the, the, the normal aero performance side of things and that performance development needs to keep going all through the year. Um, obviously the big factor that we've added for this year is the, you know, the powertrain, how we optimise the powertrain. Um, and getting the most out of it both in qualifying and in the race. In some races we're fuel limited, we all have to work on how the best way to save fuel and also to, to minimise the fuel consumption. So there's a lot more factors this year which will affect the end race result. We, we can burn fuel to try and recover energy from the, the motor that's on the turbo. Um, we can put that straight into the, the motor that drives the car forward as well as charging the battery. So the actual complexity of what we can do now is, is huge um, and you can effectively balance electrical energy versus fuel consumption um, and it's our job to try and work out what the best combination is for a race. Of all the new elements introduced in 2014, the power unit certainly deserves a special mention because of its complexity and also because of the fact that we will use less fuel than years before. The power unit is made up of a number of components. The main one is the 1.6 litre V6 internal combustion engine. There is the air system, which is made up of an MGU K, an MGU H, and a battery pack and a control system. The power unit is turbocharged, so there is a turbocharger, and there is also a gearbox. The Formula One of this year will be fitted with a 1.6 litre highly efficient engine that will use 40% less fuel than the V8 from last year. The approximate consumption of the engine will be 40 litres per 100 kilometres, which for is quite a lot, but in terms of a racing car is really very little. The regulations this year have two main consumption themes. One is a total amount of 100 kilograms. The other is a fuel flow rate of 100 kilograms an hour, which starts from 10,500 RPM, which is mainly there to limit the power, ultimate power of the engine. Consumption will be a key factor this year, and it will be necessary to use innovative strategies to save fuel during different parts of the race and also decide when to recover energy to then use your fuel more efficiently and effectively during the race. I'm sure all teams will be well prepared, but in the early races, with everything new, there will be a lot to learn, and you could probably see people having to save fuel towards the end of the race. More than ever, the driver will have to think really on his feet and also listen a lot to the advice from the pit wall and the various strategy groups behind the pit wall. The fuel cell is located behind the driver. This serves two purposes. The main one really is for safety. Also, as it's the centre of the car, as we start with a lot of fuel and go to little fuel, it preserves the balance of the car and keeps the drivability of the car during the race. At the end of the race, we will have to save enough fuel to give a sample to the FIA to check that our fuel has been legal.